Welcome to Cricket World TV. It's time for another hotspot. The World 2020-2016 is about to get underway. I'm John Pennington. I'm here in England and I'm joined in India by Chetan Nora. Chetan, great to catch up with you once again. How are you doing? Hello, John, and uh, welcome to all our viewers uh, once again to Hotspot. Uh, uh, I'm doing well and uh, travel, travel is beckoning uh, once again, beckoning once again, uh, quite, quite an interesting tournament ahead of us so far it's uh, it's been a, a bit of an embarrassment in terms of its uh, its organization the the tickets uh, the schedule came out very late the tickets uh, didn't come out on time as well a lot of hassles faced by fans in booking tickets especially the ones who are traveling from overseas i don't even know if there are many from fans who are traveling from overseas which is which is a bit of a disappointment because last last year when i was in uh, australia in 2015 a lot of indian fans a lot of people flew in from all parts of the world, especially from India. Uh, so it, it was nice to see the environment there, you know, the support. Uh, will that be the same for the other teams that will be flying into India? I mean, teams like Australia, England, South Africa, every other team. I mean, is it going to be easy for them? The answer is no. So it's, it's a, bit of a, you know, a bit of a disappointment, a bit of a shambles, really, especially for the, uh, for the associate teams, because uh, not many of them will qualify for the main tournament. Uh, just the two and uh, you know it, it's their first part of the tournament uh, and again the tickets not being on sale and so much uh, so many hassles for the fans uh, it doesn't really bode well but again apart from that yes uh, the cricket uh, is about to start and uh, hopefully it'll be a good tournament on the field probably make up for uh, for for what's for what's been missing so far in, in the build-up to it yeah, let, let's hope you're right there, Chetan, because, yes, it has been very disappointing just to see and read about what's been happening off the field. On the field, though, we start off with the qualification, if you like, or the, the first two groups, Group A and Group B. One team from each group goes through to join the Super 10s, as they're being called. So let's look at Group A first of all. Bangladesh, Ireland, the Netherlands and Oman. And we've seen how strongly Bangladesh have been performing recently into the final of the Asia Cup, where they were beaten yesterday by India. This surely will be a huge shock if they don't get out of this group and make it to the major tournament. Absolutely. I think uh, Bangladesh are, are the clear favourites uh, from this particular particular group. And, and not just because, uh, you know, they're playing in the subcontinent or the fact that, uh, you know, they, they have just uh, uh, participated in the Asia Cup. I, they are obviously contributing factors, uh, but it's just been the rise of Bangladesh in the limited overs format in the last one year that's that's been really magnificent i mean we look at uh, how they qualified for the quarterfinals uh, of the 2015 odi world cup uh, you know, they had they, they played some really good cricket they came together as a team the fast bowling unit is is you know i, I think one of the one of the best in the subcontinent at the moment i mean india have always had trouble sri lanka just about you know getting a new fast bowling unit together pakistan right up there yes you know tall lanky fast bowlers with them Mohammed amir coming back so I think Bangladesh have now got that fast bowling unit, which is, I won't say it's rivaling Pakistan, but it's almost on the same footsteps. And, you know, limited overs cricket with, with fast bowlers who can really bowl nicely you know, under the lights, especially get the ball to move. It's, it's always a bonus, always a bonus. So uh, Bangladesh and, you know, yesterday uh, before ahead of the India-Bangladesh match, I, I was wondering that if um, there was an added, um, you know, uh, excitement about that game, um, certainly, I never felt an India Bangladesh game to be, you know, to be having so much excitement in its build-up, and that's because in the limited overs format, Bangladesh are able to enhance their qualities on the field. They become that much more threatening, and you know, they were very good in the ODIs. They are even better in the in the T20 format. They'll be a handful for all the rest of the three teams. They certainly were. Now, let's, let's briefly focus on those other teams, Chet. The Netherlands, they performed so well at the last World 2020, beating Ireland in that remarkable run chase, then of course beating England. Maybe haven't made so much progress since. Ireland, I don't know what to expect from them, really. They, they did okay in the, in the 50 over World Cup, but their 20 over form hasn't been so good. And Oman, really very much rank outsiders. Obviously, this is their, their first appearance. Uh, absolutely. The uh, last time they played in India, a world event 2011 uh, they they had they had a good team they had a young team which was starting to gain momentum in in the associate 
nation among the associate nations they beat england over there um, it, it seemed to bode well for ireland but from then onwards for whatever reason i mean the icc has not been kind to them obviously but uh, they haven't really kicked on and you know those players they will all, they will all those who were there in the 2011 world cup they still be here uh, in this tournament but you know it's been four years uh, times just moved on ireland I'm not sure they are as strong uh, as they were in 2011, but uh, they, they will obviously be a handful. Uh, I think they are the second side in this in this group A, which will be hoping that you know they can get through Bangladesh. Obviously, the one the favourites, but if anybody who can challenge them, it's it's really Ireland. They have the firepower in the middle. They 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 are familiar with this sort of cricket. That, that's that's for sure. But again can they do it against bangladesh can they do it against the rest of the two sides can they can they counter those indian conditions once again and and get on top of their rivals uh, it will be very interesting to see and um, uh, and apart from uh, obviously apart from uh, the uh, the irish we also have uh, uh, netherlands and oman in this uh, in this group oman obviously rank outsiders in this tournament they they had to go through so many layers of qualification and you know then they go to the final qualification tournament in in um, in, in uk and then they got through i mean it, it's been a miracle for them it will be a little too much to expect from them to you know get through can they upset the upper car of one of uh, one of the bigger teams in this qualification uh, maybe because t20 format is very unpredictable and you know uh, it all on, you only need to take a side like that easy you know just just don't rate them at all and just say oh we'll just turn up and win maybe then you know an upset can happen netherlands are uh, are the dark horses i would say because uh, they did very well last time around in in 2014 they beat ireland in the qualifying stages um, it was a it was a hell of a match that 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 game was really great and uh, obviously they beat ireland and then they qualified to the next stage can they do that this time around a bit doubtful because not only do they have to be in Ireland again, they also have to contend with Bangladesh. Um, like I said, Bangladesh clear favourites from this group, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they'll be tested by Ireland and Netherlands both. Yeah, I'd go along with I'd go along with that, Chet. And certainly, we we could see a situation where, say, Bangladesh win all three of their games, that the other three three teams might win a game each and sort of all beat each other, so Bangladesh get through reasonably comfortably there, but yeah, Bangladesh for me have to get through there in a sense. Um, the winner of that group, by the way, goes into the group with India, New Zealand, Australia and Pakistan. That's going to be very, very tough. And not that there are any easy groups at this stage, but that does seem a very, very loaded group. At uh, Group B then we've got Afghanistan, Zimbabwe, Scotland and Hong Kong. And for me, the clash between Afghanistan and Zimbabwe is going to be critical here. They are the two top ranked in sides in this group and of course Afghanistan recently beating Zimbabwe in, in some series, uh, so some pretty serious matches, so it could, could go either way. Um, yes, I think in, uh, Afghanistan enjoy the favourite tag in, in this particular group and uh, which is surprising because we have a test nation there, Zimbabwe, um, and you know they, they were all over them in, in their recent series. It, it, it was uh, I wouldn't say it was closely matched in the sense because Afghanistan looked comfortable after the exploits in the 2015 ODI World Cup. They looked comfortable against Zimbabwe. So, um, considering the fact that they've been building this momentum up, you know, they have a, they have a good battery of uh, uh, pace bowlers. Uh, you have Hamid Hassan, who was very instrumental in in their in the way they performed in the 2015 uh, World Cup. So, uh, the only the only area where I'm a bit circumspect about Afghanistan is their batting. It's it's a bit lightweight, you know. Even in the uh, even in Australia, and New Zealand, it was their bowling that was really performing wonders for them. That was giving them giving them a chance in the ODI format. But um, their batting was really messing it up. They were losing just too many wickets to lose shots, too many wickets early on, and then what somebody would come on and just stay at the wicket, play out the overs. That's not gonna do in this format, you know. They they need uh, they need to keep those wickets handy in the initial overs. And then you know probably go on and strike the ball. So uh, for me, the real concern for Afghanistan is their batting. Their polling obviously looks very, they, looks very good, especially from the associate point, associate nations point of view. Uh, they would be my favourites to qualify from this group, but it's not going to be easy against the likes of Hong Kong and Zimbabwe. Yeah, and I think Zimbabwe have, have lost a few players due to injury as well, which isn't going to help. And we haven't really mentioned Scotland or Hong Kong. Hong Kong had a, a reasonable time of things in the, their first appearance a couple of years ago, but they really are, in a way, without being disrespectful, just, just making up the numbers here, aren't they? Absolutely. Hong Kong and Zimbabwe are the two teams uh, that, you know, 
I would say are even Stevens because uh, I mean even if you look at the preparation that they have, Zimbabwe have had a bit of an up and down. Hong Kong could you know potentially up, uh, upset the apple cart here, so uh, which will be obviously uh, uh, a boost uh, a boost for their morale. But again, you know, focusing on Zimbabwe, it will be a bit bit of a. Uh, a death blow for Zimbabwean cricket if they cannot get out of this group. I mean, because you, at the other end of the spectrum, you look at Bangladesh and the other group who are ranked favorites to qualify uh, qualify from that group, even though they do have Ireland uh, in that group. But the same cannot be said of uh, Zimbabwe in, in this particular group. So um, uh, it's not looking good for Zimbabwe at the moment, but I wouldn't say that they will not qualify, but um, they will be up there. They will be in the contention, but if they can just get the sum of their parts right at the same time, uh, not considering the way they have performed in the warm-ups. Um, so they really need to come good together at the same time as a bunch, as a unit, and then maybe uh, they, they would find it much, much easier. Yeah, absolutely, Jackson. So rather boring in a way, we're both almost predicting the same thing, Bangladesh and Afghanistan to go through from these qualifiers. And what about any early thoughts and, and predictions of the tournament overall? Um, well, it's uh, it's a bit early, isn't it, to to to, to give out predictions with uh, just the first qualifying round getting underway. Uh, but I think India are looking good. Obviously, um, they they have what they have won nine out of the ten matches in in, in the run up. Uh, uh, in the run up, they've beaten Australia in Australia. They've beaten Sri Lanka in India. They've beaten all of the Asian teams in the Asia Cup comfortably at that. So um, I think it's a bit, a bit of a turnaround from where they lost against South Africa, 2-0 at home in, in October. They, they've addressed their problems, but um, I wouldn't say they would be the eventual winners because it's not not at all easy to predict winners in World D20, but I would say they're, they're surely in for a shot for the semi-finals. Uh, South Africa, I think they're looking good, starting to look good with, with AB de Villiers opening the innings. Australia have the firepower. Pakistan unpredictable as ever. Still unpredictable whether they're coming for the tournament or not. To be to be very honest, uh, England excited with their uh, limited overs resurgence. Uh, eager to see what they can do in the warm-ups. Uh, New Zealand surprised that Bryn McCollum is not here. Uh, if he had been playing, perhaps their chances would have increased even further. But uh, obviously, a stronger style, strong side still. You can never, uh, you know, and you can you can never really. Um, say West Indies are out of the T20 format, so uh, a, lo a lot of uh, combinations, combinations possible. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how the teams shape up and uh, probably uh, discuss a bit in detail uh, later in the week. We certainly will. You, you've been very nice to sat on the fence there, Chet. And I mean, we have actually been asking all of our contributors to get in their predictions, and almost all of them are. We're all pretty much saying the same thing. India are very much the favourites. It's difficult to to not see them winning. They're at home. They're in form. But it is, I think you're right, it's a little bit early to sort of nail the prediction down because although, you know, we've seen South Africa performing quite well, Australia, a brilliant win yesterday, and Bangladesh was same playing where they've still got to get to India, get adapted to conditions and get their combinations right. So still early days, as you say, we'll be catching up with you as you're sort of travelling all around the country, watching the games, just covering them for Cricket World. But for now, Chetan, thank you very much for your time today. Pleasure. And uh, thank you very much for watching us here on Cricket World TV.